Hi, it's Jason from the Dental Equipment Repair Channel. We're back here for episode two, looking at the Apollo Oil Lubricated Air Compressor. We last left off in the first couple pages of the manual. We kind of looked at some cautionary information as well as the layout of the manual itself. And we talked a little bit about um, the compressor itself. Now we're gonna be moving on to the next page, which is some general information about the compressor. Now, there is a wide variety of differences between these different models of compressor. And so the way that Midmark or Apollo did it was they tried to give you a code or a key to understand what the model numbers mean. And um, not that this is really something that you probably need to memorize, but this is something that is good to know because manufacturers will at times go ahead and try and give you information in the model number of a piece of equipment they manufacture. So let's just go ahead and work through this chart, kind of see what we can understand from it, and then we'll just kind of uh, chop through this. So there is a weight chart that's on the next page. Um, the power cord is typically eight feet. Um, the electrical requirements are going to be based on the compressor itself. There's a um, definitely a voltage requirement as well as an amperage per head, and that also um, factors into circuit breakers and sizing uh, these uh, compressors. So that's um, at installation. It's important that you make sure you have the proper protection. There is a half of an amp fuse, which is F1. And the motor runtime is going to be based on the actual size of the tank itself and the amount of motors that it has, the compressor heads, to pump up those, um, those motors, pump up the, the cylinder, I mean. So here we have um, basically three little um, areas here. The first one is a choice between a lubricated rock, oilless, or scroll. So for our purposes, lubricated compressor is the one that we're going to uh, be seeing on that part number. The tank capacity is going to be either 20, 40, 60, or 80 gallon tank based on what that number says. And then the D indicates if there's desiccant. Now, desiccant, we'll talk about that a little bit later on, but that's basically how moisture is removed from the air. And we can talk a little bit more about moisture in the air because that's a huge factor with concerning um, air compressors. And down here, it basically says equipment's not suitable for use in the presence of a flammable aesthetic mixture with air, oxygen, or nitrous oxide. And the reason that is is because that air compressor is compressing ambient air and there can be an explosion if you pull in flammable or um, combustible gas into that compressor head when it's hot. So the next page here, um, we've got the same kind of similar layout here. We've got um, AC is an Apollo compressor. L is lubricated. Um, the horsepower is actually the second... Let's see here, 10 is one, 15 is 1.5. So basically there's this all dividing by 10, I guess. So that's how we can kind of tell what the horsepower is. Now, I won't really get into like what horsepower is, but basically it's a, it's a measure of, um, it's a, like an energy measurement. And again, here with desiccant and then um, options, compressor starter contactor, and that would be kind of like a wall mount um, contactor. A contactor is something that takes a low voltage and then controls a higher voltage. So instead of turning a compressor on and off by applying and removing like 230 volts, you turn it off on and off by applying 24 volts. And we'll have an opportunity to look a little bit later on as far as how that works. Now, Here's their table, and this is specifications, and basically here are the model numbers, the max number of users. Now, max number of users is a function of cubic feet per minute, and it's depending on what types of hand pieces are used. Um, I believe a somewhere between two and three, 
and it's based on high speed hand pieces, low speed hand pieces, because I should say the purpose of this compressor is to drive dental hand pieces. So depending what the simultaneous usage is, that is what really drives the size of a compressor. So as you get more simultaneous usage, you need more cubic feet per minute. And this is all rated at 80 PSI. So if you have a lot of procedures going on, that's what would drive you needing, you know, more heads and, you know, a bigger compressor. So sizing a compressor is really important. You don't want to undersize it because you won't have a strong enough compressor and it'll be struggling to keep up and you don't want to have a large compressor that's too large because um, you'll have overbought. So the horsepower um, on these compressors is listed here. The tank capacity is um, is here and it's going to be either a 10 gallon, 20 gallon, 30 gallon or 40 gallon tank. Now the purpose of the tank is to store air for after the compression cycle. Now the voltage here um, all but two are 208 to 230 volts, and only two are 115 volts. And those are the L21 and the L41. So you have a two, basically a, a single head that's 115 and a dual head that's 115. But after that, it's all 208. Now, total amps is an important factor because when a compressor's running, it is um, drawing amperage, which is current. And you'll notice here that the L21, which is 115 volts, is running about twice as much amps as a 208 version, which is the L22. And that's the reason you'd actually want to run a higher voltage compressor as opposed to a lower voltage compressor because your amperage is going to be a lot lower um, because 208 or 230 is a lot more efficient. So when you're planning, you want to make sure that you have proper circuit protection for that uh, proper amperage. The recommended breaker size is always going to be above the amperage that it takes to run the compressor. What can happen is if you undersize your breaker, like say you have this 21.6 amp here, this L62, and then you put in a 20 amp breaker, when it starts, that will actually uh, trip that breaker and cause the breaker to trip, and that's on the wall. So the sound level is important. The Obviously, as you get more compressor heads running, the sound is, is louder, but these are pretty quiet as far as it goes. And then we have width, depth, height, and weight. You'll notice that these compressors are pretty heavy. So um, that's something we'll talk about as far as how to properly move these compressors um, in a, another episode. But the, let's see here, they've also talked about your starter kit, which is again that contactor, and um, fresher intake. Fresher intake um, is talked about down here. It says remote air intake temperature must not exceed compressor room air temperature by more than 20 Fahrenheit. So in other words, if the tank is cold and the air coming in is hot, what will happen is moisture will condense in the air intake and enter the compressor head, and that will contaminate and fail the compressor. The other thing is the compressor must be installed in a clean, dry, and well-ventilated area on a solid level floor. We've seen it all. You have to be sure you put your compressor into a good environment. Ambient temperature must be between 40 and 100, so it can't be below freezing and it can't be super hot. The twin trip triple or quadru quadruple compressor must be under normal operating conditions. Okay, so this is kind of about some general information, and this is as far as I could get in this segment. Um, definitely let me know if you have any questions specifically about what these things mean, but in general, um, this information is found in the beginning of most manuals, and it's important to have some sort of an idea of what it means with regard to your compressor and your practice. Again, this is Jason from the Dental Corner Repair Channel. Thanks for sticking with me.